We survived in a Pokemon fan game where you have to be one of all the different villains in Pokemon. So yes, that is the premise. The goal is to survive till the end and be the number one villain in Pokemon. So that's exactly what we do, ladies and gentlemen. And a lot of mysteries happen along the way. Let's get started. So we kick off by starting Villain Jam, which is basically a game that is all about you becoming a villain. And the first thing that actually happens is we actually get to see how all the different villains disappear. So first, of course, is Kanto and we have of course, Giovanni, who is talking to trainer Red and is telling him that he's going to beat the life out of him before all of a sudden disappearing as well. Then we head over to Hoenn and a seafloor cavern. Specifically, Brendan is about to deal with Groudon and Kyogre, respectively, when Archie and Maxi show up and are telling you to simply behold the beauty of such magnificent ancient Pokemon. And then all of a sudden, they also vanish into thin air. On the other hand, in Sinnoh at Spear Pillar, none else than Cyrus is angry that Lucas has foiled his plans of creating a separate galaxy and universe for himself, and he also is pissed off and angry before he vanishes as well. In Unova, inside of End's castle, Jetsis, of course, is going off and being crazy when all of a sudden he also vanishes away. Over in Kalos at the Team Flare Secret HQ, Lysander is telling us all about Pokemon and why he needs to do what he needs to do before he also vanishes. And then all of a sudden, we're in a Lola at the Ether Paradise, where Guzma is dealing with some troubled youth, and all of a sudden he also vanishes. And lastly, we head to Galar, specifically to the Spikemuth town, where we meet Piers. And yeah, for some reason, he is considered the evil villain of this game, and he is brought as well to the mysterious dimension. And now the question is, what's going on? Now, all the villains have actually been teleported to this place together, and the question is, what's happening? Now, one of the most interesting thing is, if you actually look at the map here and what's going on, all the actual real villains, like the real villains, are all inside of the, you know, kind of battle arena. Meanwhile, the developer decided to put Pierce outside of that because Pierce isn't considered one of them. Pierce is actually the only one that doesn't want to go along with this and is against it. All of a sudden, a strange character makes an appearance on a giant screen in front of them. And this guy is telling us some interesting things. For example, he brought us all here to fight in a tournament till death. Well, actually, not really a tournament till death, but actually, he brought us here because he wants us all to fight against each other to determine who is the greatest villain in Pokemon, and he tells us we can only use six Pokemon, and it's going to be a tournament style of a thing. So, next up, we get to choose who we want to play as, but also he tells us about the villain jams, which are special jams specifically made for us to use. These are like revives, potions, etc., items along those lines. But either way, it's time to choose who we want to play as, and once we do choose we'll then be able to go and talk to Gerard, the robot over here, who'll then allow us to take on our actual challenger. So that's pretty much the general premise. And now you guys know what the deal is. But of course, first and foremost, we have to decide who are we going to play as. And I decide I want to go with specifically Cyrus. Now, the reason I chose Cyrus is because I love Team Plasma and I think they are some of the best. And in terms of what Pokemon I'll be using, you are automatically given the signature Pokemon. And in this case, I am forced to use Honchkrow. And I also do get a Mega Ring and some TM. So if you want to give specific moves to your Pokemon, you can do that. We also add Crobat to our team because of that poison typing will come in handy. Houndoom is also added in with the Dark Fire and we have Nasty Plot, Sludge Bomb, Fire Blast and Dark Pulse on it, which are a great move set, especially with the Nasty Plot as a good setup to use. And also, it does have a Mega Stone on it, which means it can Mega Evolve. Next for the team, we find Gyarados. Now, we do want to have a Water type on here because it will come in handy. And the Dragon Dance, Crunch, Earthquake and Waterfall are a perfect combo. The Waterfall against any potential fire types and the dragon dance for the actual setup with crunch which is just fantastic next up we're kind of considering a lot of different options here we have a few different things we go for and i'm thinking and considering maybe we wild but then we see Bennett, and i think okay a mega Bennett could be cool it is a ghost type it's got dazzling gleam shadow claw you know like gunk shot and all that sort of stuff so we go for that one as well and then finally we decide we should also add possibly crow gunk in here because the poison fighting and the you know the fighting can come in handy sword stance is on there too so hey a sword stance on this thing, that is really nice. Now that we have our team, we're actually able to go take on the challenges. But before that, we want to look through our team here. As you can see, Honchkrow, of course, is the uh, the one we were forced to use. We have to have Honchkrow on our team. It's legitimately a necessity. It's got Sucker Punch, Brave Bird, Superpower, and Night Slash in terms of its moveset. Then we explore the different rooms to see what all the different villains are up to. Giovanni is simply just talking about expanding Team Rocket, and he's not really too focused on what we're talking about, which is unfortunate, but we just ignore him after 
after that point. We then go and visit specifically Maxi, who's just talking about crushing Archie to be able to capture Groudon then and expand land. On the other hand, you have Archie just pacing back and forth in his new room, being just angry at Maxi, wanting to crush him to expand the oceans. On the other hand, also you have our room, which looks great, by the way. I like the little, like, pod thingies that you actually have from the original Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. Jetsis is just angry and says for you to F off out of his room, which is just kind of rude and mean. I'm not gonna lie. Why is Jetsis always such an a-hole? I mean, I don't get it, man. It is what it is, though. Nonetheless, on the other hand, Lysander, he's just simply talking about creating a beautiful world, and then nobody will be able to stop him, which is fair enough, I guess. On the other hand, though, Guzma... Just decided to go sleeping. Yes, Guzma, for whatever reason, decided that, hey, sleepy time is the only thing that matters to him. And who cares about anything else? Who cares about actually doing your due diligence and your job here? Also, we find a crumpled up paper with the Team Skull at the top. And we then end up reading it, which just tells us that Team Skull was a street gang in the Alola region that was founded by Guzma. And they were mostly just bugging people and stealing some rare Pokemon. And, you know, sometimes Guzma would help out the Ether Foundation. So, more or less, it's just giving us some small details. However, However, Piers is the only one you cannot actually talk to. He's the only one you can't interact with, and you can't reach him when you're in his room, for whatever reason. I guess it's because he's the only one, and he's kind of been locked away because he's the only one who technically isn't an actual bad guy. The rest of them are more or less bad people, but he's the only one that isn't. Now, we are going to be battling Maxi. That is our battle. Jets is up against Guzma, Giovanni, Lysander, and Pierce is up against Archie. So those are the actual battles. We go to the vending machine to buy ourselves a few extra items. There is the Scarlet Villain Jam. That is one of the first things you have as an option. You have the Royal Villain Jam, and you also have the Golden Villain Jam. Now, we get loads of the basic one, which is a Scarlet one. Uh, we get a Royal one as well, and uh, we don't have a lot of money to spend, so we try not to overexert ourselves way too much. And it tells you right here that this one, the Villain Jam heals you for 100, and uh, the Golden one revives, and of course the other one is a full heal, so the Royal one is a full heal. Next, we talk to Gerard, and we actually have the option here. You can either go right in and take on the battle and enter the tournament, or train your Pokemon against his Ardinos. So first up is going to be, of course, our Honchkrow, and then we also level Gyarados by Mega Evolving it and just using Crunch, which is great. After this, we heal ourselves up, we also then check the board, and then it's time to take on the first challenge. Challenge, which of course in this case is going to be Maxi. So very well, the first round is ready to go. Let's begin. Maxi tells us that we humans have grown on dry land and the land is everything. And its importance is paramount and that's why he needs to defeat us. However, we are Cyrus, so we do have our other desires in this case. So what is Maxi going to be kicking off with to begin with? Well, he's got a camera up to start things off. It's level 50, so yes, we all start off at the same level, give or take. We got Hanscrow out first and at this point, I'm not really sure exactly what to go for, so I go for the Night Slash which does do a lot of damage, but he mega evolves his camera up, which is annoying. However, we get one hit KO'd by it, which is really frustrating. So at this point, I decide, okay, Gyarados should go out next because it does have the water typing. And of course, we do have the mega on it. Plus, Intimidate does come in handy as well. So we mega evolve it, and then we go for a nice Dragon Dance. This is a perfect setup to get higher speed and higher attack because we do have that crunch, which will be handy against anything that isn't a, you know, I guess fire type in this case, but nonetheless, we do go for the uh, waterfall, I think, in this case, which does do enough damage to one hit KO this thing, so it is gone, okay? Camera up is gone after this, and it is perfect. I also think we level up, so we're level 52 already at Gyarados, and we just needed to do a little bit of leveling to get him up one level. Now, we don't really need the Hyper Beam. It's not the most necessary move in this case. We already have a pretty decent setup. We probably should have switched out waterfall, but honestly, it does the job more or less. So at this point, I'm kind of running, okay, so we can go for Crunch or Earthquake, so I go for Earthquake instead. It doesn't kill, which is unfortunate, so we go for another one, which is more than enough to get rid of the Mighty Hina. Now that Mighty Hina's gone, we are down to only four more Pokemon left on his team. He kicks off then next with a Crobat, so of course here we can't go for Earthquake, very obviously this thing is straight up flying, so that's not going to work. So we decide, okay, Crunch it is, and we go for a Crunch. The Super Fang does do quite a bit of damage, of course, the given fact is the Super Fang is going to be halving our, you know, original HP by a lot, so that doesn't really matter though, we get rid of it too. Houndoom is next, so this is a Fire type, which means the Waterfall would be the most logical choice, which it, of course, is as the one-hit KO comes in and destroys this thing, leaving next up his Macargo. Again, same thing here. We can just waterfall it, and it is gone. Again, we're super lucky with the fact that we do have Gyarados. If Gyarados wasn't an option, I think we would have struggled a lot more. And, of course, you do have different options depending on what villain you choose to play as. So, if you guys want to check this game out, I would highly recommend that when you check it out, when you try it out yourself, uh, you know, pick some different character. Try out maybe Pierce. See what his journey is like to give it a try and see what it's like. If you want to check out this game, 
game. You can check it out on the internet, Pokemon Villain Jam, if you want to check it out there, or come to our Discord. There's a link to the actual page uh, there as well. So you guys can do that. Either way, ladies and gentlemen, Maxi is done for, and he's now sent away by the villain. And he also asks here, you know, why not have all eight of them help us out? Why not all the villains? Well, he says, no, you see, I already witnessed what mostly you can do together. And he's specifically referring to Rainbow Rocket. This is when all the villains came together and they still failed. They still didn't achieve their mission. He's pretty much telling him, well, it's not going to work. So guess what? You're out. So ladies and gentlemen, we want our first battle in the tournament, meaning there are now four people left in this. Jetsis, Giovanni, and Archie. So Pierce is gone. Uh, same thing with Lysander and whatnot. They're all out. So there's only four left. And we got to take on somebody else next, which of course is going to be Jetsis. Now before that, we're going to make sure we're going to stock up on a few items, get ourselves ready because we're about to take on the next challenge. So after buying ourselves loads of jams, we then head over to Gerard the robot and take on the next challenge, which of course is going to be Jetsis himself. And we're ready for the second round. Of course, Jetsis just seems like he has an ego that's larger than the Mississippi River for whatever reason. I mean, this guy is really up his own bum and just talks about how perfect he is as a being, which I think is ridiculous, but that doesn't matter because uh, we need to whoop him. Okay. We need to whoop him into position. So here he goes with a Hydreigon to kick things off. I'm not going to lie. Jetsis was like the last one I wanted to battle. I had a feeling like he was going to have the most likely, most annoying team to go up against. We go for Night Slash, which probably wasn't a good choice. Let's be honest. I should have gone for Superpower right away because it would have been the better choice, the better move just in general. However, he switches out the Hydreigon, which is the oddest thing to me. Like how and why does he keep doing this? But he kept doing this for a while. Superpower then doesn't really do a lot. We go for Night Slash against this Electros and it isn't enough. The Drain Punch comes in and heals the Electros actually a little decent amount um, and it leaves us kind of stranded. At this point, I'm not really sure what to go for. Gyarados seems like a weird choice, but we go for Toxic Croak instead, which uh, we do have quite a few decent moves on. So Swords Dance is there in case we want to go for it, and we do, which gives us a nice setup. The Flamethrower does come through, though, which doesn't kill us, luckily, and it gives us just enough time to go for Drain Punch, which gives us a lot of our HP back, but also gets rid of the Electros, which is exactly what we needed. So at this point, we're now in the lead. We have only really lost, I think, one Pokemon with Hornscrow, as far as I remember, and we have now a Seismic we go for Sucker Punch, which uh, does a decent amount of damage. However, the Earthquake demolishes Toxic Croak. It is gone at this point, which leaves me a little bit concerned. We don't really have a Grass type of any sort, so we can't really do much in that regard. So I just decided to go for Gyarados instead, given the fact that we do have the Crunch. And of course, I want to go for the Dragon Dance to set myself up in this case. More or less, it's just Gyarados doing the setups and doing most of the work. However, the Poison does come through, and that is one that really worries me because poisoning us here is dangerous. However, the Crunch is enough to get rid of of the Seismic Toad, and it is gone, ladies and gentlemen. Out, done, donezo, finito, bye-bye, not alive anymore. However, Hydreigon does return. We go for the Crunch, though, which was a bad choice. I shouldn't have done that. However, we can't really use Earthquake either, and I don't really know if Waterfall is going to do much either in this case. So, Crunch it is, ladies and gentlemen. Crunch it is. So, we go for a Waterfall after a bit. The Royal Villain Jam comes in, though, and does do the heal for his Hydreigon, which is awful for us because we're running out of options. We don't really have anything to heal status effects. We only have a full restore, and we don't really need to use that just yet, so we can just go for a Royal Villain Jam instead and heal ourselves up. And of course, he does a U-turn here again. So he's already switched out U-turn and done this multiple times, ladies and gentlemen. He keeps doing it. It's pretty annoying. He comes in with a Tyranitar instead, and now I'm a little bit concerned. We have the Poison, which is doing a lot of damage, ladies and gents. A lot of damage. And I'm considering maybe letting Gyarados just die. Like, maybe just letting him pass out would be the goodest, the best choice. However, he does get us, I think, right there and takes us out with his Mega Tyranitar. And at this point, it is a bit concerning. I am not sure exactly what to do. We have three Pokemon left and we're not in a really favorable position. His Tyranitar to begin with is already very strong. I mean, it's mega evolved for crying out loud. What am I supposed to do? So we go for a Dark Pulse here, which uh, wasn't a good choice because it doesn't really matter. We get outsped and Burnett is also out, leaving us with only two Pokemon left. The Sandstorm is, of course, raging as well, which doesn't make anything better. It just makes everything feel much, 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 much worse, which is concerning. We go for Brave Bird, hoping it'll be enough damage, but it really isn't. And we end up in a horrible position. However, the Dark Pulse is not enough to get rid of us. The Sandstorm does do quite a bit of damage, though, I'm not going to lie. We go for the Cross Poison, which uh, just does barely enough damage to get rid of this thing. So Tyranitar is out of the picture. However, there's still more Pokemon left in that team, and Hydreigon is coming in again. So three more Pokemon. We have two left. We do have some revives, which we can use. Uh, of course, we're going to be using probably one here to get one of our Pokemon back. We go for the Cross Poison again. It does do a lot of damage, and the Poison comes in, which is exactly what we needed. The Poisoning of the Hydreigon is the one pinnacle thing that saved us here. So without 
this thing being poisoned, we wouldn't have had enough strength left to revive the other Pokemon with Houndoom. We, like, we needed this. We pretty much needed this because at this point, just reviving one of our existing Pokemon is more than enough. Of course, Gyarados is going to be the one because we do have the Dragon Dance and all that sort of stuff on it, which is perfect. It goes for a U-turn, which is a bit frustrating because it just keeps surviving with like a bare inch left. We go for Fire Blast, which is a one hit KO on the Bishop because of course the Steel Typing is not going to be able to handle the fire and heat that comes out of this beast. So it's gone, leaving the Hydreigon and one more mystery Pokemon, which we do not know which one it is. So we go for a Dark Pulse. He, however, uses a jam and pretty much fully heals himself up. And I thought, okay, I wanted to save some of the Fire Blast because of the lower accuracy, I didn't want to waste using it as I thought like, okay, this is a waste. It's dumb. It's not worth it. What am I doing? Now we have a weak Gyarados against a Hydreigon and a another Pokemon that we still have yet to see. And I had no idea what the last one could be. I literally couldn't think about like in my brain, like what could the last one be? So we go for a Royal Villain Jam, which is the one that fully restores your HP. We do that. He goes for another U-turn, meaning another different Pokemon is about to pop in. And the final one is a Cofagrigus. And I just think to myself, oh boy, I don't know what to do right here. But I realized very quickly that if we Dragon Dance and then we go for a, uh, a good old, good old Crunchy, we should do a decent amount of damage. And we do. We take half of its HP. However, Mummy does come in, which is annoying, switching out our abilities and uh, being a little bit frustrating. The Shadow Ball does do a lot of damage, and we go for another Crunch, which is enough to get rid of Cofagrigus. Now, there's only Hydreigon left, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, this one was a bit of a doozy. So, we go for a Crunch. It does do quite a bit of damage. However, I am now scared that we're going to lose. The Flamethrower comes in, which luckily, he went for Flamethrower instead of anything else, meaning we had just the perfect amount to destroy the Hydreigon, and it is deleted, ladies and gentlemen. It is gone. It is out of this world. We have defeated Jetsis. His calculations, his careful schemes, the world is not his, no matter how many of them he did. So he's also yeeted out, meaning we now have only one battle left, the grand final against Archie. Yes, he defeated Giovanni as well, meaning that we now have only one battle left. And now, of course, this grand villain here, he seems to be a little bit bored and he wants to make things a little bit more interesting. So he gives us 25 five legendary balls. Now, apparently these legendary balls are actually better. Like each participant receives them and especially they're especially like better than regular ultra balls and regular pokeballs. They have a higher chance than even an ultra ball to actually catch any kind of legendary Pokemon. So that is pretty interesting. I'm not going to lie. We get yeeted away and now we land in what looks to be Spear Pillar. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we now have the ability to capture a legendary. Yes, we can get ourselves a Dialga. In the back, you guys can see there is a adamant orb, which you can pick up. And uh, yeah, that is time to take on and capture ourselves a Dialga. So Dialga ends up being an actually pretty fun battle. I'm not going to lie. We do have to do a, quite a bit of damage to it to be able to actually get it down to a level where it's acceptably going to be catchable, which uh, does take a bit of time. I'm not going to lie. But eventually, after a lot of tries, we do actually get it. And then we replace it with the Bonnet. So Bonnet goes out of our team and we keep the Dialga on there instead, which I thought was a good choice. So we went for that and it worked out in our favor. So now we are back at the strange location and ladies and gentlemen, it is time for us to take on the last challenge. As you may notice, if you enter the rooms of the other villains, they're actually gone now. They don't exist there anymore. There are no villains left anymore. It's just us. And uh, yeah, the final battle is against none else than... Uh, Archie himself, so let's get it started. So, the battle against Archie begins, and uh, yeah, this is the final battle of the tournament, and guess what, ladies and gentlemen, this man is telling us all about how the seas, the seas matter the most, and expanding the sea is important, so the emergence of new Pokemon species will be possible, and that's exactly what he wants to do, so of course, defeating us is his easiest way to get to that position. So, here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the battle against uh, the Aqua Boss Archie has begun. So, Archie's team is as follows. He's got himself a Sharpedo coming out at level 55. Now, as you may notice, we are underleveled against this thing. I wasn't ready for it, and he goes for the Mega Evolve straight away. So, we try to go for Super Power, which is actually amazing because it leaves this thing on only one HP left. However, he goes for the Royal Villain Jam. So, uh, when I wanted to go for my Sucker Punch, just as a final blow, it didn't really work. It didn't really work out in our favor. We got totally yoinked, and uh, guess what? Yeah, we lost Honchcrow. Yeah, we're back in a very shitty position. So, 
I decided to finally go in and try to use Dialga in this case, because guess what? Dialga is strong. We do also have Thunder on it, which is a good move in this case. I mean, it's a literal water type, so why not? The Thunder, or actually the Aura Sphere, does hit in this case instead. But then I decide, okay, maybe we should use the Thunder this time, which of course has the lower accuracy, but luckily, luck is on our favor this time around, and we do get the hit, meaning that Dialga takes out the first Pokemon on that team. Next up is a Mighty Yina, same as we saw with his buddy, uh, you know, Maxi in this case. So uh, yeah, we take this guy on as well. We go for the, uh, you know, Aura Sphere, which is enough to get rid of it. So the Mighty Hina is gone, leaving another remaining four Pokemon on his team. Next is a Crobat, which uh, was a little bit more concerning. However, we do have the Steel Typing in this case, I think. So we're not too worried about any Cross Poisons or anything like that. I go for Aura Sphere, forgetting that it's not going to do any damage. Instead, I realize, wait, maybe I should have used Thunder. But our Thunder misses, which is unfortunate because we are now down to three HP on Dialga. And we're about to lose it because, uh, yeah, I should have gone for like Roar of Time or something instead. I don't know why. I, I just made the wrong choices here. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, but it is what it is. It's not really much you can dwell on it. So we switch into Gyarados instead, which is a perfect Pokemon, as you guys already know from the previous battles you've seen. We just go for the Mega Evolution, and then we also go and uh, make sure that we just get rid of this thing. It goes for Super Fang, which does a lot of damage. The Waterfall is enough to get rid of it, leaving now him with three more remaining Pokemon. However, the next one is a doozy. It is freaking Kyogre, and not just like any Kyogre. This is the primal Kyogre. I mean, look at this. It's from Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, or specifically Alpha Sapphire, but look at this thing. It is disgustingly difficult. So we go for a crunch. I don't remember if we actually did do a Dragon Dance here. I think we did, but uh, we are a little bit, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of damage. The crunch is more than enough. The Origin Pulse luckily misses, and that pretty much saves us. If the Origin Pulse had hit, I think we would have lost Gyarados, and uh, I think at least we would have lost it, and we would have been pretty much out of this uh, more or less. I think we would have lost it. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's not the end of the world. He's got a wall ray next. We go for the crunch. It is done doing a lot of damage. It also lowers its defense, meaning we are in a perfect position to get rid of it. The surf from the wall rain doesn't really do anything. And now there is only one Pokemon <laughs> remaining. And we're about to be the winners of this. It is a muck, a big old muck muck. I mean, look at this thing. It is beautiful. We go for the crunch, which does do quite a lot of damage. Also lowering again its speed in this case, but defense does rise. And then we go for the crunch again. And ladies and gentlemen, we have beaten the last of the challenges. We are the winner, ladies and gentlemen. We won against Archie. Yes, he is gone, which means we are the winners. We are the finalists, and we are the ones going to be helping the secret villain out with whatever his schemes are. Now, the question is, of course, who is the villain itself? Like, who is this person that we've been talking to this whole time and who's been keeping us here? Well, guess what? It is Faba. Yes, it is Faba from Pokemon Sun and Moon, or specifically from Alola in this case. And guess what? He's telling us to go upstairs. Uh, we, of course, make sure to heal our Pokemon team up first because we find that important. But then it's time to go upstairs says ladies and gentlemen. Once we enter the room, we finally see Faba, and he is about to tell us why we're even here. He gives us the explanation that he used to be a branch chief of a group based in the Alola region known as the Ether Foundation. And uh, yeah, he used to work for them, but that eventually, instead of being a branch chief, he got demoted. He lost his job, and alongside that happening, he found a bottle, and inside of this bottle, he found a genie, specifically Hoopa, and then he was able to unlock Hoopa's unbound form, and by using the Hoopa unbound, he was then able to travel between universes, and by doing so, he was able to witness all the different villains in their different universes. But before Faba can put his plan into motion, guess what? We as Cyrus actually betray him. We straight up betray him, and we want the power of the Hoopa. He cannot have it for himself. We want it. So ladies and gentlemen, we battle him for the Hoopa. So, here it is. We're taking on the Pokemon trainer, Faba, who kicks off with a Hypno. We have Dialga up first in our team, and of course, it is level 55 against a 56, so that is a bit worrisome, I'm not gonna lie. But we decide to go for Roar of Time, which does do quite a lot of damage. However, full play, does do a little bit, and the Royal Villain Jam does come in from Faba to heal himself up. We go for another Roar of Time, which does do quite a bit of damage again. However, we now need to recharge, which means we're taking a lot of damage, and he's able to Drain Punch himself back up in health. And then we go for a Fire Blast, which is just enough to get rid of the first Pokemon, which is Hypno. Of course, remember, he has some other Pokemon on this team that could be dangerous, such as Hoopa itself. I mean, it's literally level 58. So, uh, yeah, uh, the Drain Punch, it kills us. It destroys us. We are very, very scared at this point, ladies and gents. We're very scared. So, we switch into Garrett 
Gyarados, of course, our ace, our number one Pokemon, even better than our Dialga. We switch back into him because I'm not going to lie, dude, this thing is a fantastic. If you just go with the Dragon Dancing nonstop, you just do so much work. Like, seriously, Dragon Dance Gyarados is just fantastic. So I decided to go for Dragon Dance. Then we go for Crunch. We almost do the full damage right there, but after two of the crunches, it is gone. Hoopa Unbound is missing. It is gone. It's deleted. Level 56 is also for Gyarados. I don't think we actually bought any more villain jams, so we're actually more or less out of most of them. So we go for the crunch on this Raichu. We one hit KO it, which, uh, yeah, we're already down three Pokemon or so. Like this, this man is falling quickly. He has an Alakazam next, which we also take on. I think we pretty much also try to crunch this bad boy, but he goes for this Mega in this case, which uh, is a little bit concerning. I'm not gonna lie. He also Calm Minds, which is a bit worrisome, but that doesn't really matter because the crunch is more than enough. Of course, he has low regular defense. And uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter. We get rid of him very quickly, meaning there's only two Pokemon left, which is one of them. It's Bruxish. And uh, I hate this Pokemon, okay? I hate Bruxish with a passion. I don't know about you guys. If you like this Pokemon, you can let me know in the comment section down below. That's fine. Of course, if I like something and you don't like it or you like it and I don't like it, that's fine. We all have our own opinions. That's just how it is. But nonetheless, we do do quite a lot of damage. And finally, the slow bro gets a crunch. And ladies and gentlemen, we have defeated Faba and... Uh, Guess what? I don't think he's too happy about it. He is uh, very surprised that we decided to basically trick him and take it away from him. Um, and guess what? We are now able to control the Hoopa after basically stealing the bottle from the Faba man. So Faba basically lost his bottle and now we control it and uh, Hoopa, uh, guess what? It actually helps us. We kick him into the portal and then we are able to use Hoopa to travel wherever we want to. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the game. Yes, ladies and gents, that was the game. That was the story. That was the video game. If you guys enjoyed it, drop a like down below. Make sure to subscribe. I love that. It was a fun little game. If you guys want to check it out yourself, of course, you can join our Discord or just search up Pokemon Villain Jam on Relic Castle. If you join our Discord, there's a link to the Relic Castle link there. I can't link it in the description, unfortunately. But ladies and gents, we'll see you guys in the next one.